Hello, I'm Ben Godwin. Welcome to the Word Workshop recorded at the Good Springs Full Gospel Church. God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy, holy. My wife Michelle and I have pastored the Good Springs Full Gospel Church since 1999. A spirit-filled church with a hunger for God and a heart for people. Good Springs Full Gospel Church is located in Walker County on Highway 269, 10 miles south of Jasper. The prophet said that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. So prepare your hearts to receive from the Word, because when all else fails, God's Word works. Bibles, if you will, please, to the book of Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 11. We'll get there in a few minutes. Praise God. Show you a couple things I like that were posted. It says, there will come a time when every step of the journey God is taking you on will make sense. Until then, keep trusting. Amen. I'm following the one who knows the way. The Bible says, now we know in part, but then shall we know even as also we are known. We don't have the whole picture. One day we will. Amen. I like this. It's a little bit fuzzy, but it says two signs, same message. You got a one-way sign and look at the shadow. <laughs> How many know there's only one way? <laughs> Jesus said, I am the way. He didn't say I am a way. He said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. How about this? Pollen season in the south. Anybody testify today? Man, I wish I had a dollar for every time I sneezed and blew my nose this week. <laughs> I got a scripture for you. Well, it's kind of a paraphrase. No pollen formed against you will prosper. Claritin 316. <laughs> And you saw this, I'm sure. I just can't resist. I'm sorry. Bring forward, you must, or late to church, you will be. <laughs> Praise God. How many glad you made it? You made it. All right. Go with me in your Bibles to Deuteronomy 11. We're continuing our series called The R Words of the Bible. And we have made a lot of progress. We've covered a lot of rich material. I mean, look, what, look at the words we've studied in the last four months. And now we're winding down, and maybe another one or two, I can't promise you. But today, I just felt led to preach on rain. Rain. The spiritual significance of rain. Now, we know literal or natural rain. We've gotten a lot of that lately, right? But it's a symbolic of something spiritually significant in the Bible. We've received so much rain lately. Did you know there's even flooding in parts of California right now where there's been a severe, extreme drought for years? And while that is happening in the natural, I believe it parallels something God is doing in the spiritual. Simultaneously, there's been an outpouring of spiritual rain, not just in the Asbury revival, but in places all over the country. I challenge somebody to say, send the rain, Lord. Come on, say it again. Send the rain, Lord. Quench our thirsty souls. So rain is water, right? It's essential for life to survive and to thrive on this planet. Animals need it. Plants need it. People need it. Water is vital for life. Did you know on average you can go usually three to five days max without water? There have been some exceptions. There was a... An earthquake in Mexico, 1985, workers rescued a man who had been trapped without water in a collapsed building for nine days. His survival has been attributed to the cool, humid environment and the fact that he lied still for more than a week. But that's an exception. That's not normal. Nine days. Here's the good news. You don't have to wait nine days to get your fill. 
Hallelujah. Jesus said, blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. How many lift your hand and say, I'm thirsty, Lord. I'm thirsty, Lord. Send the rain. Praise God. This is an interesting story I came across that, that just really illustrates what I'm trying to say. There were four guys who their ship went down in the Atlantic Ocean, east of South America. Four sailors barely managed to survive by transferring to a small lifeboat. Their troubles were just beginning as they drifted at sea aimlessly for several days under the blazing sun. They became nearly delirious with thirst. Their only relief, listen, came by catching rainwater in their shirts from a small cloudburst and then wringing the raindrops into their mouths. Finally, they were spotted by another ship and were rescued. When the captain on the rescuing vessel asked why they were so thirsty, they said, because we have nothing to drink. The captain explained, but you're in an ocean of fresh water. All you had to do was let down your buckets. Evidently, their boat had drifted to a part of the ocean where the mighty Amazon River pushes out fresh water for over 100 miles into the Atlantic Ocean. Even though they couldn't see land, the sailors had been floating in a sea of fresh water. They were so sure the water was salty, they didn't even try to drink it. All they had to do was reach over the side of the boat and get all the water they needed. Instead, they were dying of thirst while floating in a life-saving solution. Doesn't that describe a lot of people? Jesus said, whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. Yet this world is dying from spiritual thirst, all the while floating in a sea of fresh water. Whew, hallelujah. How many know we have access to that living water today? Just reach out. Take it. Praise God. Did you know this? Before we get to Deuteronomy, did you know this? In Scripture, water is symbolic or symbolized by water. The word is symbolized by water, Ephesians 5, 23, so that he might sanctify her, meaning the church, having cleansed her by the washing of the water by the word. So the word of God is symbolized by water. But did you know this? The Holy Spirit is also symbolized by water. Jesus said, it said in that, that great day of the feast, he that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly, other versions say out of his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. And notice the next verse. It says, this spake he of the spirit that was not yet given because Jesus had not yet been glorified. So how many have received the water? How many have received the spirit? Hallelujah. They're both symbolic of water, essential for spiritual Life, Hallelujah. Notice Jesus didn't say, if you believe on me, you'll have a trickle of living water. Notice he didn't say you'll have a creek. Notice he didn't say that you'll just have a stream or a brook or even a river singular. He said, he that believeth on me out of his belly will flow rivers, plural. How I many know if you're full of the word and full of the spirit, there ought to be a river of praise and a river of joy and a river of love and a river of the presence of God flowing in and through your life. Somebody say, let the river flow, Lord. Let the river flow. You don't have to beg a river to flow. Just remove the obstruction, whatever's hindering it, and let it flow. Hallelujah. Let the spirit do what he will. Did you know this? This is interesting. To me, did you know the first time that rain is mentioned in the Bible is because it didn't rain? Look here, Genesis 2, 5, and 6. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth, but a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. It had never rained until Noah's flood. A mist came up out of the ground. God had a, his own irrigation system, his own sprinkler system. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to make all the vegetation thrive. In fact, the first time it rained again was in Noah's time, Genesis 7, 4. I will cause it to rain upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. Remarkably, Noah had faith and believed God in something that had never been seen before. Here's the scripture. Hebrews eleven seven. 7. By faith, Noah, being warned of things not seen as yet, 
or not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his house. It had never rained before. And here Noah is saying, you better get ready. A flood is coming. And people are looking around like, what are you talking about, dude? You've lost your marbles. It had never rained. But he believed in something he had never seen. Hallelujah. How many, how many have faith for something you've never seen before? I've never seen Jesus face to face, but I believe in him. I've never seen the nail prints in his hands by my own eyes. Hallelujah. But one day I will. I believe in something I've never seen. Hallelujah. And when God sent the rain, the deluge came. Did you know this? Interestingly, the first three times the Bible mentions rain, it was in judgment. Number one, in Noah's flood, it rained for 40 days, 40 nights, Genesis 7, 12. The second time the Bible talks about something being rained down is in Sodom and Gomorrah. It rained fire and brimstone. Then the third time was plague number seven out of 10 on the land of Egypt where God rained hail, Exodus 9, 18, and 23. So the word rain is in the Bible 102 times. Rain past tense, another nine, so 111 times total. And here's the thing I want you to see. In Old Testament times, rain indicated God's favor while drought indicated God's displeasure. And that's why I had you go to Deuteronomy. Are you there? Let's read a few verses. Look at verse 10. For the land whither thou goest in to possess it, it is not as the land of Egypt from whence you came out, where thou sowest thy seed and waterest it with thy foot as a garden of herbs. But the land whither you go to possess it is a land of hills and valleys. And listen to this phrase, and drinketh water of the rain of heaven. Boy, I like that phrase. A land which the Lord thy God careth for. The eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it from the beginning of the year even unto the end of the year. Verse 13, and it shall come to pass if. Everybody say if. That means it's conditional. If. He says, if you shall hearken diligently unto the commandments which I command you this day to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, here's the promise, that I will give you the rain, everybody say rain, of your land in its due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thy oil, and I will send grass in thy fields for thy cattle that thou mayest eat and be full. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them and then the Lord's wrath be kindled upon you against you and he shall, listen to this phrase, shut up the heavens. Man, we don't want the heavens shut up. We want the heavens opened up. That there be no rain. Everybody say no rain. And that the land yield not her fruit lest ye perish quickly from off of the good land which the Lord giveth you. All right, God promised to send the rain if they were obedient. He promised to withhold the rain if they were disobedient. God controls the weather. Listen, man doesn't control the weather. Hallelujah. It's a good thing. He messes everything else up. <laughs> Hallelujah. God can turn the faucet on or he can turn the faucet off as he wills. Send the rain, Lord. Somebody say, send the rain, Lord. Praise God. You remember the days of Elijah. You remember what Elijah said to wicked King Ahab and his wife Jezebel? Elijah the Tishbite said, Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel lives, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. What happened? God turned the faucet off. For three and a half years. Can you imagine not a drop of rain for three and a half years? Every, all the vegetation's dying. Cattle dying. People dying rationing their water, being very conservative because they know it could run out any day. According to legend, Jezebel used water, some vessel with water, and doused out the flame that was on the altar in the temple. She extinguished God's flame with water, and it's as if God says, okay, you turn to your idols, here's what's going to happen. If you want my fire back, it's going to take the last bit of your water. What happened on the showdown at Mount Carmel? You remember all the false prophets of Baal out there dancing in a frenzy, cutting themselves, hollering, screaming, prancing around. 
no rain. And here's the thing. Baal was supposed to be the weather god. Baal was supposed to be the god of thunder and the god of lightning and the god of rain, but he was powerless to send anything, any response at all. Hallelujah. And, and Elijah starts mocking him. He <laughs> says, maybe you need to yell louder. Maybe, maybe he's asleep or he's gone out on a trip. Or you, You're not going to like this, but it's in some versions. It says he's, he may be sitting on the potty. I can prove it to you, biblically. And boy, he taunted them and he kind of, you know, mocked them. And finally he said, Lord, <laughs> he rebuilt the altar that was broken down. And he said, the God that answers by fire, him shall we serve. And what did they do? They took 12 barrels of water, not little bottles of water, 12 barrels of water, and they doused the bull that had been cut up and laid on the altar. Why? It, it, it poured down and, and went into the trench around. Why? Because water was the most valuable commodity of that time. It hadn't rained for three and a half years. People would rather have water than gold. And what did he do? He poured the most precious thing on the altar. And God honored it. Hallelujah. And God responded to his simple prayer and sent fire in so much that it licked the water out of the trench that was around because he rebuilt the broken altar. How many believe if we turn from our idols and we rebuild the altar, hallelujah, God will restore the rain. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody help me preach this morning. Send the rain, Lord. Send the rain. And you know the story. There he is with his, his servant after they kill the false prophets. Elijah is with his servants. He prays seven times. And he says to Elijah, or says to Ahab, Elijah said to Ahab, there is a sound of an abundance of rain. I hope that's prophetic today of what God is about to do, not only regionally and nationally, but internationally and globally. Somebody say there's a sound of an abundance of rain. Hallelujah. We need the rain of revival. We need the rain of refreshing from God's presence. Hallelujah. And there he was. He prays and he sends a servant. Go look. You see anything? No master, nothing. Prays again. Go look again. Seven times. Listen, you prayed once or twice, don't give up. Keep praying. I heard some dude on the radio years ago say, if you pray about something more than one time, you're praying in unbelief because you don't believe God heard you the first time. I got a Greek word for that, baloney. <laughs> Did you ever not hear that Jesus prayed the same prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane three times? If it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Elijah prayed seven times. There's something about persistence in prayer. You don't give up. Hallelujah. We talk about it, Brother Ken. My mama had that bulldog faith. Sink your teeth in the promises of God and hold on and don't let go until you get an answer and a breakthrough in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Listen to what he says. His servant comes back and says, Master, there's a little something out there. Just a little dinky cloud. Not much. About the size of a man's hand. He said, you tell Ahab, get his chariot ready. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. God brought the deluge. God brought the downpour. Hadn't rained for three and a half years. But when they got rid of the idols, are you hearing me? When they got rid of the elder, idols and they repaired the broken down altar, that's when God sent the rain. It's true naturally, it's true spiritually as well. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Did you know this? In the song of Moses, did you know Moses compared his doctrine to rain? Deuteronomy 32, 1 through 4. It says, give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew as the small rain upon the tender herb and as showers upon the grass because I will publish the name of the Lord. Ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. He is work is perfect for all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. What is he saying? He's saying sound biblical doctrine is as refreshing as the rain. I was so glad to see it rain this week. 
Oh, I know we've had too much rain probably, but all that pollen floating in the air, man, I was so glad. Yeah, man, there's a river of yellow going down our driveway. I say, thank you, Lord. The more that's washing away is the less that's going up my nose. Praise God. <laughs> Woo! It was just refreshing. It felt good. It was cool. You knew everything was going to turn green and, and spring has sprung. Hallelujah. Why? Because God sent the rain. It's that way spiritually. When you hear biblical sound preaching and teaching, what happens? Your spirit is like, ah, yes. <laughs> that's what my need, I needed that word from the Lord. Moses said, my doctrine is like rain. How about Isaiah? Listen to what he compared God's word to rain. Isaiah 55, 10, for as the rain comes down from heaven, the snow returns not thither, but watereth the earth, makes it to bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, bread to the eater. Now here's the comparison. So shall my word be, goes forth out of my mouth. It will not return unto me void. It shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. God's word is like refreshing rain. It's not going to return void. If God has spoken things into your spirit, listen, you may not have seen them happen yet. You may see no evidence of change, but let me tell you, heaven and earth may pass away, but God's word will not pass away. It's going to come to pass. If it's not God's time, you can't make it happen. If it is God's time, nothing can stop it from happening. Amen? Well, glory. How about Hosea? He had something to say about rain. Another prophet, look at this. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning. He shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and the former rain of the earth. Maybe that's prophetic of the second coming, could be, but I believe it, it can also be spiritual that when God's spirit comes, it's like the former and the latter rain. Whew. We'll talk more about that in just a second. Here's another scripture from Hosea about rain. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. That means do righteous things. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. That's the old hard heart. Stubborn will. For it is time to seek the Lord and watch what he'll do till he come and rain righteousness down on you. You plant the seeds, but God sends the rain. How I many know oh, you can have all the seeds in the world in the ground, but if you don't get water, you're not getting a crop. And you can have all the water in the world, but if you hadn't planted any seeds, you're not getting a crop. But if you plant the seeds and he sends the rain, then God will give the increase. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Look at this with me. Paul Harvey, page two, praise God. Look what Joel, the prophet, compared rain to revival. Joel 2, 23, be glad then, ye children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God. He hath given you the former rain. Everybody say, former rain moderately, just a little bit. And he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, everybody say the former rain, and the latter rain in one month. That's not normal, my friend. <laughs> I don't know if James Spann could even explain that one. <laughs> Normally, the former rain and the latter rain are months apart. Some versions say the autumn rain and the spring rain. That's months apart. What happens? The former rain is what comes to soften the earth where you can plow and plant your seeds. But the latter rain is what comes to help those, those seeds, those uh, grains come to fruition and maturity to where harvest time can come. You've got the planting and the plowing and then you've got the harvest rain. And God said, I'm gonna give you both in one month. Woo, hallelujah. That's not normal. That's not natural. That's supernatural. Somebody say, God, send the rain. The former and the latter rain together. And I'm not talking about the weather. Holy Ghost rain, fall on us. I said, Holy Ghost rain, fall on us. Hallelujah. The former rain, which ends the dry season, starts the rainy season. Prepares the ground for plowing and planting. The latter rain provides the moisture that matures the grains, prepares them for harvest. 
So the former rain is associated with preparation. The latter rain is associated with harvest. And God said, I'll give you both in one month. Probably he was prophesying of something naturally, a bumper crop, a surplus. But how many know God speaks on parallel levels? Not only speaking about natural things, he's speaking about spiritual things in the last days. You get it? Hallelujah. All right, let's wrap this thing up. Put a bow on it. Hallelujah. How about James 5, 7, and 8? Therefore, be patient, brethren, till the coming of the Lord. You see how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it till he receives, here it is again, the early and the latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is drawing nigh. Think about this. Does a farmer go out, plow up his field, plant his seeds, come back out the next day and not see anything and kick the dirt and say, I quit. He wouldn't be a good farmer, would he? He knows there's a long time from the plowing and the planting until he's got a harvest, a crop. There's months in between. A lot of times we plant our seeds. We plow up the ground. We pray about something. And then when it doesn't happen within three or four days, we're like, well, God didn't, didn't hear me. God don't care. Come on, friends. You've got to look ahead. I said, you've got to look ahead. He's the Lord of the harvest. I said, he's the Lord of the harvest. Even Paul said that in, to the Corinthian church. He said, I, I planted and Apollos, another preacher, he came by and he watered. But let me tell you something, God brought the increase. He said, neither is he that plants anything, neither is he that waters anything, but the one who brings the increase is everything. Hallelujah. Send it, Lord. Send it, Lord. Praise God. All right, I'm trying to wrap this up. We're trying to land this plane, folks. Are you with me? All right, buckle those seat belts. Here it is, James 5, 16 and 18. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails what? Your praying is important. Your praying matters. Keep praying. Look at this, Elijah, spelled Elias in the New Testament, Greek rendering. Elias prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by a space of three and a half years. I like the next phrase. And he prayed again. You may have prayed, but let me ask you a question. Have you prayed again? <laughs> Woo, you may have prayed, but somebody say, I'm going to pray again. I'm going to pray again. And what happened? And the heaven gave rain and the earth brought forth her fruits. Why? Because he kept on praying. By the way, notice this. Apparently, he only prayed one time for God to turn the faucet off. He had to pray seven times for God to turn the faucet on. Don't ask me why. I don't, that's one of those mysteries of the scripture I don't understand, but it tells me to keep praying. Don't give up. Keep believing God's gonna send the rain. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. All right, I'm done, folks. I'm done. Here's what I say. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven and let it rain. Pray until you're, uh, you're soaked. Pray until you're saturated with the presence and glory of God. Let it rain until it becomes a river. Let it rain until it becomes a flood. Hallelujah. Flood us with your glory. Saturate us with your presence, your peace, and your power. Listen, no amount of entertainment is going to satisfy your soul. No amount of earthly pleasure and recreation is going to satisfy your soul. No amount of money in your bank accounts will ever satisfy your soul. But if you can get in the presence of God and you can sense that spiritual rain of the word of God and the spirit of God, it will flood your, your thirsty soul and satisfy you like nothing else. And once you've had a taste of it, nothing else will satisfy Taste and see that the Lord is good. I say, let it rain. I said, let it rain. Brother Ben, it's rained three or four days. Yeah, let it rain. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Let it rain. Open the floodgates. Let it rain. Will you stand with me and lift your hand and say, Lord, let it rain in my life. Let it rain in my family. Let it rain in my children. Let it rain, oh God, in my relationships. Let it rain at my job site. Let it rain in my business, in my work. Let it rain in my body. I need healing today. Let it rain, oh God. Send it down like rain. Come on, just wave your hands to heaven. 
Say, God, we need the rain. We need the rain. We're thirsty. We're thirsty, oh God. Satisfy our soul. Not the flesh. Satisfy our soul. Oh, hallelujah. Touch your people. Hallelujah. I believe the anointing is in here to meet any need in your life. Miracles can happen this morning. Whatever you're struggling with today, God can break through and saturate and soak and flood that thing with his glory until there's a turning point, a breakthrough. If you want or need prayer, come. This altar is open now. Hallelujah. Oh, you are great. You do miracles so great. No one else like you. Oh, there, there is, is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one. Sing it. Hello everyone, this is Pastor Ben Godwin thanking you for watching our broadcast today. I pray it has been a blessing and a source of spiritual enrichment for you and your family. I'd like to invite you to visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view many more singing and preaching videos. Search for Good Springs Full Gospel Church at youtube.com. Also, please visit our website at goodspringsfgc.org where you can learn more about our church and ministry, read many of my articles on a variety of subjects, find a direct link to our YouTube channel, shop our online store, and donate to our church and help support our TV ministry with debit, credit card, or PayPal. Also, you can mail in an offering the old-fashioned way to Good Springs Full Gospel Church, PO Box 3161, Jasper, Alabama, 35502. If we can assist you in any way in your spiritual journey, please contact us. And remember, when all else fails, God's Word works.